In the previous episode of this series, I went over the RFK Stadium circuit in Washington DC and I came to the conclusion that although the circuit was a failure in certain aspects, it could have survived longer had it been in a different location. Mainly because the circuit was pretty darn good. These ones however, and no I haven't said that wrong, have a little left to be desired. Miami. Palm trees, crisp blue skies, sandy beaches, a bookmark destination for the holiday maker. Plus of course, the current host of a Formula 1 Grand Prix. But we're not talking about that one. We're actually talking about this one. More specifically, the Miami Bayfront Park Street Circuit that hosted kart and American Le Mans series races from 2002 to 2003. Now already, the fact that this event lasted only two years right from the outset is not a great sign. That being said though, like we've seen in the previous episode, street races can be ended abruptly for reasons such as public backlash, so there's every chance this track befell the same fate. I mean from what I can tell, that is not the reason why this event lasted so briefly, but we'll come on to that later. Let's get the ball rolling with the first event in 2002. The track creation was apparently inspired by the famous Long Beach circuit, which, when you see what the designers came up with, it's not hard to tell. The fountain section and the tight hairpin, just to name a few in terms of similarities. Certainly, appearance-wise, the track does look a bit like Long Beach, just Miamified. That being said though, this track does have one problem that plagues almost all street circuits, and that's early teething issues. Generally with street tracks, particularly in their first year of use, early problems are fairly normal. However, when it comes to early setbacks, this track really is taking the biscuit. Or, seeing as this is the place where the headquarters of Burger King are, this track really is taking the whopper. This track had some areas which had been repaved to smoothen out the tarmac. But when it was first ran on the Friday, some of the newly laid tarmac that formed part of the circuit through a car park was coming up just out of practice, so had to be temporarily fixed with quick puring concrete. That wasn't the only issue though, because that part of the track was slippier than an ice rink covered in petrol, and thus caused drivers to lose the back end with barely any throttle application whatsoever. However, with the track still coming up, huge amounts of concrete were put in overnight to fix the circuit. This wouldn't help the grip issue necessarily, but it would certainly help with the track surface actually staying fixed to the ground. Still, at least it's October, in Miami, so the weather shouldn't be another headache. Not going well this, is it? What you're currently seeing is Kart's Saturday qualifying session. But I can understand if you don't think from this footage that they're going that quickly, because they're not. At the Calamity car park corner, drivers were initially struggling to go beyond 25 miles an hour. Although with the cars running on track and the sun occasionally poking out, the track would dry up, to the point where the teams and drivers went on to dry tyres, which given how most of the track is made of concrete, that's not too much of a surprise. Unfortunately, one part of the track would stay stubbornly damp the entire session. Do you want to take a guess at which part that may be? Yep. You're right, even though I don't know what you've guessed. It's the Calamity car park corner, and several drivers got caught out on the dry tyres. So why on earth was what was happening, happening at that particular section? Well it turns out because of poor weather conditions, when the resurfaced area was put down, it didn't cure in time for when the cars came onto the track. Hence, the grip was lacking somewhat, and because of the downforce these cars produced, the track couldn't cope and broke up. Calamity Car Park Corner wasn't the only issue. This track was about as wide as a set of binoculars, so passing was far from straightforward. In fact, it was almost impossible. And because there were a lot of bridges and trees hanging over the circuit, the onboard cameras would often turn into atmospherics. Also, a lot of these races would turn into caution vests as the walls were so close to you. And, because of the tight confines, you weren't really able to get back going again all that easily. Certainly, given how these cars had the turning circle of a cross-channel ferry, it would lead to scenarios that would make Austin Powers blushing. However, despite a number of crashes, spins, traffic jams and flying engine covers, we got through the 2002 races with Boris Said winning the Trans Am race, Frank Beeler and Emanuele Pirro winning the ALMS race, and Cristiano De Matta 
winning the kart race. All of this happened in just one event. Still, at least it meant that the groundwork had been sown for a smoother run in 2003. So, coming to the first corner, and already, you may have noticed that we're turning left, not right, like last year, and heading much sooner to the dolphinless Long Beach style fountain section. You may think this was because the area was so despised by drivers that the organisers got rid of that section. As it turns out, it wasn't. Calamity Car Park Corner was only meant to be a temporary part of the track in the first place, because the section in question was being developed into a future building site. That meant the course had been cut by around a third of a mile, which may not sound like much, but when you consider that reduces the overall length of the track by roughly a quarter, it would have been incredibly short. So, to compensate, the organisers extended the track further from the original last corner left hand hairpin and turned it into a sharp right kink, followed by a slightly less sharp left hand hairpin, followed by a left right chicane back onto the start finish straight. Unfortunately, the new part of the track created a different problem. Bumps? They would put Sebring to shame. This was no ordinary bump. It made the champ car skittish, Porsches fly, and make the nearly unbreakable Audi R8s crumble. Once again, the heavy duty construction equipment came out to try and fix the problem, but the impact this had was limited. The races were as many people expected. Nigh on impossible to pass, unless you used some unrecommended initiative, and crashes slash cautions were a rather prevalent occurrence. I mean, the races were entertaining in their own unique way, but they were more as a result of chaos rather than compelling racing. The winners? Well, for the ALMS race, it was Johnny Herbert and JJ Leto, and for the Champ Car race, it was Mario Dominguez. However, the ALMS race was shortened by a couple of minutes due to heavy rain approaching, and also because of all the carnage that was going on. After that, the event was no more. I couldn't find an official reason, but rumours are were that both championships weren't particularly keen on staying. Whether they were fed up with the track problems, or whether the teams didn't like the rather chaotic nature of the circuit, and thus pleaded with the series organisers that they didn't want to risk stuffing their expensive machines near a fountain anymore, is not particularly common knowledge. In terms of the positives for this event, I guess considering the rather short nature of the circuit, it attracted around 85,000 people, which is pretty impressive. Also, at the end of the day, it is being held in downtown Miami, so if you ignore the racing product, then just purely focus on the sight of 800 horsepower single seaters and some of the most exotic prototype and supercars hurling themselves around the tight confines of Bayfront Park, then it's a wondrous image. Plus, I imagine the sounds that reverberated around the skyscrapers and hotels would create an intense yet unbelievably awesome experience for the years. Other than that though, this was never destined for any long-term success. Sure, it's Miami, and yes, some of the pictures were amazing on the eyes, but when the track issues were seemingly endless, having to get bulldozers and angle grinders and over half of Miami's entire stock of quick peering concrete being used to help fix the circuit, as well as the circuit being on the most part a glorious parade where overtaking was mostly done out of optimism rather than relative certainty, there was a level of, dare I say, unprofessionalism about the image that was being put across to the television audience. And maybe it was one that Cart and the American Le Mans series didn't want to associate themselves with any further. So we go from one track, which was a success circuit-wise, but not so good for the locals, to one which is the exact opposite. The beauty of street circuits, but that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. What are your thoughts on this circuit? And comment on any further failed street tracks you'd like to see me cover. However, until the next video, enjoy the rest of your day.